and um, can access the video and you can even access the video afterwards should you want to revisit any of the information. Um, feel free to keep off your camera at any time, of course, but specifically uh, absolutely during the presentation. Um, and that we ask that your mics be on mute during the presentation and then we'll um, open it up for questions, um, a question and answer session and people can turn on their, um, we can have more dialogue, more sharing. Um, you can add questions though during the session. Please feel free during the chat, of course, write in any questions and Emma um, Bowen will be collecting those questions and we'll address them at the end or you can ask them at the end, but we will be, as you're thinking about them, just go ahead and put them in there. We don't wanna lose an opportunity to answer any of the questions. That's what we're here to do today. Um, and then also um, this new little uh, added bonus is that you can put on the live transcript. There's a button at the bottom of Zoom where you see the mute button, the stop video and all of that. And there's a CC, it's live transcript. If you click on that, it will also ticker um, the, the closed caption for you if you want to follow um, that way. Um, and then um, if you need, we'll be happy to go past the 30, the time that we have allotted just to be able to answer and make sure we can answer all your questions. So hopefully we'll get to everything um, that you need today to be well informed because we have an incredible opportunity uh, and an exciting project. So um, again, welcome and thank you so much for choosing to spend this time with us. Um, we have the next hour together at least, least um, uh, and to hear this story. What we're asking you to come to today is to consider an invitation to invest in young people, invest in creativity, invest locally, uh, to do impact investing. It is the impact investing is to invest in others, invest in yourself and invest in a community. Um, and that's, that's is super exciting and super, super new in a way to organizations like Sketch. But first, I get the opportunity to introduce you to my co-host today. I'm co-hosting this, this uh, session today um, with an incredible um, person um, who I get the honor of knowing. Um, her name is Dynasty. Um, and Dynasty is, um, she dares you to experience yourself at your utmost potential. And she really does. She really calls that out of, out of people. Um, she does this through innovative and unapologetic entertainment, coaching session and workshops. She is also known as a fierce music artist and financial coach that the artistic brain and the financial brain, it's brilliant um, in Toronto with a contagious energy that can transform any space she works in. So take it away, Dynasty. Hi everybody, <laughs> see you. I have, my name is Dynasty and yes, everything that Rudy said, I am an entertainer, I sing rap, always wanted to do that since I was a child. Um, I was one of those, those kids who really wanted to pursue the arts, did everything that I could, accessed every free resource that I could and sketch uh, was the first resource I ever accessed that taught you how to run arts-based workshops. Um, that's how I got my in with Sketch and I was just blown away by the community. Uh, I learned a lot on how to just, you know, pretty much become an like an artist entrepreneur. You know, I started getting all of those uh, those tools to like organize your workshop, start facilitating properly, which led to the coaching, which led to me having the confidence to do all of the stuff that I'm doing right now, teaching people, coaching, uh, being a financial coach. But definitely uh, I was one of those kids who was in a situation that I didn't ask to be in. You know, I just came into this world in, in a, a harsh, uh, circumstance at home, at like a lot of the young people that Sketch works with. And um, I got an opportunity to participate in their programs and they helped me out a lot. So here I am giving back. So I'm just saying, I'm a product. I'm showing you that this, this works. <laughs> that Sketch has been doing a great job. So um, we're going to go through a presentation. So let's get it started. All right. Okay, I guess we want a full screen. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so what is Sketch? 
Sketch is an arts initiative that is working, collaborating, supporting, and learning with a community of young culture makers between the ages of 16, 16 and 29. Sometimes we go a little bit over, a little bit under, but you know, that's the target market. So 16 and 29. After 25 years of deep learning, Sketch is an organization that is positioned extremely well to change how we engage and invest in our communities. It is through the power of arts that we see the way through to bringing authentic voice and leadership for future decision makers, policies, and systems change. So it was founded 25 years ago. It's a nonprofit arts organization. We work with marginalized youth. Um, I was one of them, as I said, marginalized, street involved, homeless, like just, you know, kids who just need some help, okay? Just need some help and did not ask to be in the situations that they're in. So the space offers a, a great outlet to everybody um, who, you know, <laughs> who had a rough start. So um, I'm going to go through the resources and facilities now so you can see just like a virtual walkthrough of the space since we can't be there in person, unfortunately, thanks to COVID. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Sketches Creative Spaces, we have 9,000 square feet of, of space. Uh, there, it's, it's okay. When you walk in, it's amazing. Um, they have a lower level and an upper level. So the lower level, you'd walk in and you would see a few different spaces. Maybe to your um, to your left, you would see like a culinary space. That's the kitchen. There's uh, young people in there who are learning how to make meals uh, to service other young people. Uh, there's always somebody who's teaching. Like if you learn how to cook something, the young people will teach other young people who are coming into the space how to make things. I learned how to make a few salads. I remember when I was younger there. Oh using yeah, different fruits and stuff. I thought it was amazing. Um, and a lot of young people come in, into the space to access it for, for food on a regular basis. So they'll come and they'll get lunch or get dinner or whatever. And you know, everybody likes some free food. It's yeah, pretty great food. <laughs> or penny pinching. So yeah. uh, it's amazing uh, what they do in that kitchen. Uh, they have a music recording space where young people are recording some of their first demos. Uh, it's free, you can book studio time uh, through Michael in the space. I see a lot of emerging beat makers coming out of there. Also, they record people who play instruments. So there are folks who are just learning how to play the guitar and maybe just writing their first songs. You go into that space and you can actually lay down your first like demo, uh, which you only go up from there. They also mm -hmm. ceramics, oh my God, creative, the creativity that comes out of the space, like the, the things that they're able to create are absolutely amazing. Um, music workshops, uh, and they have um, entrepreneurship programs, again, things that help, like programs that teach people how to run workshops, for example, like I mentioned at the beginning, and a lot of painting. If you walk through the space, there's painting everywhere, all by young people. You can buy them too, which supports a young person, and then also support sketch at the same time. It's, it's great, it's great, the whole setup, right? They also offer screen printing. So if a young person's trying to learn how to, um, how to create shirts, you know, like maybe they wanna do merchandise for a music, you know, for a music brand or something like that, and they wanna create their first shirts. Like I created some of my first shirts at Sketch as well, <laughs> screen printing program. Uh, they have live performances, the things that they do, they usually an artist will make like a backdrop like one of the artists who paints will make a backdrop and then they'll fix the lighting, have proper mics come uh, put together and they'll throw live performances in the space. Uh, they do visual arts. Uh, they also do digital photography. I, and honestly, the photographers are absolutely incredible. So if you're looking for one, yeah. before hitting the expensive like uh, <laughs> photographer people, you know, photographers that are well known in the city, there are some emerging ones in that space. Okay. That you, you know, decide to hire them, they will do just as good of a job and they are hungry for it. Okay, um, movement and dance studio space, uh, they use, they do a lot of stuff in there. There's Kung Fu, there's uh, yoga that happens in that space. I use the space at the beginning. Um, I still use the space for uh, rehearsals for live performances. So you can dance in it, you can sing whatever you want just in the movement space. It's just a big space with lots of mirrors and some big windows, so it's amazing. And industrial arts, like uh, folks who are just getting started in carpentry and whatnot access that space. And it, a lot of amazing things happen, okay? It's, 
magical space. All right. Okay. Let's keep going. Next yeah. one. Okay. All right. So our impact in 2019 because 2020 was COVID year. So we're, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. Okay. Ah. So. <laughs> we just don't have the numbers yet. It's, we also it's, don't have the numbers, but I mean, yeah. it's not. Okay. All right. Actually, I'd be pleasantly surprised at how high yeah. they were. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> 2019, uh, we had over a thousand youth in our current studio uh, space at Artscape. We had 517 new participants, brand new people coming into the space. And we had 7,944 total visits. So almost 8,000 people have access, had access to the space in 2019 before COVID. But mm -hmm. I guess the numbers were still very high in 2020. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Okay, next slide. Okay. So, um, so we have uh, some challenges, obviously, like COVID definitely threw us for a bit of a loop, like everyone else. In terms of running a space, we are a very space-based uh, program. So not having access to the space um, gave us a bit of a, of a change, but we did incredibly well. If you want to know how to be resilient, this is the community you work with, <laughs> right? How do you shift? How do you make it work? And this project, Project Home, is another example of that, doing something against the odds. Um, and so COVID brought the challenge, but we turned it around and we actually, as I was saying, we're just starting to see the numbers now. And I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised that we were able to maintain our connection to almost, um, right now, so far, it's looking like we have almost a, um, as many young people um, connected to the programming, attending program as we did when the space was open. Um, which means we can get that much more once we're open again. And then the other challenge though that Sketch is facing as a whole pre-COVID was that as we um, are live in that community that the reality is that the, um, the, the skyrocketing real estate in the area, we've moved several times. And this space that we're in now, we've invested in it, we love it. As Dynasty shared with you, there's so much dynamic work going on in it. And to have to pick up and move um, and leave it because we can't afford it just doesn't make sense. So that's a that's a challenge. Go ahead, Dynasty. Next slide. All right. All right. So, reality check. Let, let's let's just show you how big uh, this problem is right now. So, um, right here we have two lines. One is owning and one is renting. So the green is how much our rent would be if we stayed in the space and just chose to rent the entire time. Um, and the blue line is if we chose to actually own it, if we got the mortgage happening, right? So as you can see, uh, the mortgage is very, you know, very leveled for the most part, but the rent continues to go up. It is skyrocketing. As you all know, if you live in Toronto or have ever visited, uh, every year the rent goes up. <laughs> every year it goes up a little bit, right? But the rent is definitely skyrocketing. So um, we would be forced to- You can go to the next slide. Yeah. After a few years. In 2025, we would have to relocate. And let me tell you just from my personal experience, when I first, like worked at Sketch, when I first got a job working at Sketch, um, I, the, I noticed that the space was like separated into different areas. like. We had a movement space, but the movement space was in one area of downtown Toronto. And then they had the music studio space in a whole different area. And then you could access free food in a different area. Like Sketch at that time did not have a space. They kept running and kept having all the parts, but they were all spread out into different locations in Toronto. And it was kind of like, it was a little chaotic, right? But they, they were at the time really pushing to finally get their own space and now that they have it and they're able to have all the parts in under one roof, it is an incredible space to, to get. And I know how much work they put in to, to finally be able to manifest this space. Um, for them to lose it would be like, I, I, like I can't even, <laughs> it's just, it's just imagine. even think about after seeing like how much effort they put in throughout all of the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By 2025, they would be pushed to relocate. So this is why we are running this presentation today. Okay, next. So our decision is... <laughs> yes! Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're going to buy the space because it yeah. makes sense, correct? Yeah. yeah. 
Yes. All right. So um, the cost is four point zero two million dollars. Uh, the purchase would be for the lower level space and the ad the admin hub, which is upstairs, which, which is the office space um, that we all access for printing and for meetings and all of that that good stuff. Yeah, there's lots of training and clinics that also happen, programming that happens in the space. But these two sp make up the 9,000 square foot and the $4 million campaign would be for the purchase of that, of the whole entire, uh, those, those units. It's a, it's a, um, the building itself is a heritage building and it has condo structure to it. So we're able to purchase the units within the building without having to own an entire building and manage an entire building as an organization. We don't have to become building managers, but we can actually have stewardship uh, of the space that we are, that we've already invested quite a bit into in developing. Thanks, Dynasty. So the lower space and the upper space would be ours. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Next slide. Yeah. All right. So How do we do it. Funding. <laughs> so this is a funding to reach four point zero two million dollars. Um, so we're looking to raise one point four million in community bonds. We're also looking to raise one point five two million in capital fundraising, and one point one million in approved mortgages. Awesome. All right. Our progress so far. So. Thus far, we have raised uh, 1.4 million in community bonds. Uh, well, so sorry, towards the 1.4 million in community bonds, we raised 931,000 bonds that are sold or that are pending. So we are 66% of the way there. Uh, to raise 1.52 million in, in capital fundraising, we are $1,492,603. Right, so that's 98% of the way there. All right. So when people so, ask the question about the capacity of this little organization, I just want to stress, as you consider engaging in this project with us, in a year of COVID, we've, been man we've managed to pull our organizational through, our organization through with full work, full hiring of staff. I just want to stress this when people say, what's your capacity? And we have reached our goal of 66% in bonds and 98% of the fundraising, that's in addition to our organization. So we are serious about this. We're serious about making it work and we're serious about being able to secure this space for the future, for the work that needs to be done in this community that will not only impact the lives of individuals, but the community surrounding it. So just a word on capacity. Thanks, Dynasty. I told her I would be bumping in there every so often. So. Oh, oh, of course, of course. All right, so big announcement. Oh my God, big news. Woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today, yesterday, just yesterday, the city of Toronto backs Project Home with over half a million dollars, $540,000. That's right. Yeah. Complete all of the fundraising, but it is a big chunk of the money. All right. Yeah. I asked Rudy if she was partying all night to celebrate. <laughs> She couldn't I got too much work to do. Real, so she was yeah, not. I got too much work to do. <laughs> she still yeah. got so much work to do, just like the business woman that she is. Yes. Okay. So I, she's still on it. Okay. This is not. <laughs> I just want to, the key there too, is that this also then just to kind of solidify that the city is backing us. So, which means that anybody who is also investing in sketch, the city saying, this is, this is, we're investing this much in you. So they have validated the fact that we can do this, that we're an important part of the city's infrastructure and problem um, to deal with some of the issues and challenges the city is facing. They're recognizing that and investing quite a bit in that. So thank you. Yes. All right. So how do the bonds work? Okay. Well, a community bond is an interest bearing loan that a nonprofit or a charity can issue to support their network. Essentially, you buy a bond, you earn a set interest rate each year, which we pay you the following January. We, we develop our space and we repay you the entire bond at the end of its term. So you buy a bond, it yields interest every year, we pay you. Um, that interest every year and then at the end you, you get your money back or you can choose to reinvest in the sketch space. Mm -hmm. right? Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, our bonds are coming from are, are managed by tapestry. I wanted to throw that out there. Okay. 
So scarce bonds are backed by real estate and not the financial market. So the financial markets go up and down. <laughs> you know, yeah. you wait a little bit, but as you can see, the rent has continued to go up in Toronto. So having it backed by real estate is actually a lot sturdier than you know a lot of the other the other markets that are available. So with um, people will ask questions. They're, they're not registered bonds, so they're not like your government bonds that are backed that way financially. Um, we, to go through that is quite a process. These are community impact bonds. So it's very different. You're doing it for a different reason and you're doing it with a different kind of risk. But the risk here is that we have the mortgage first, then you are in second position and you are backed by, ultimately, if we had to sell the space, you're backed by that, by that uh, real estate, which in the area we're in is something that will increase over time. Um, but we're not going to have to sell. We're going to, we are, we are demonstrating that we can make this work. So how do we actually pay back the bond purchasers, their interest payments and their capital? We have revenue generating from our assets, such as studio rentals to the public, paid workshops. So we do run revenue streams in addition to our fundraising. So operations is totally separate. One is not feeding the other. This is all about securing the space and the programs that we do to secure it and raise revenue in order to um, be able to pay back. And we've done a five-year business plan cash flow to demonstrate how we can do that. And that's available once you register, you get the business plan that demonstrates how we pay back the capital based on those. And it's not, um, it is based on our history of being able to rent out the studio to the public, paid workshops, which if we can stay where we are and focus as opposed to having to move, we can actually build on our capacity to do that and build on our capacity to raise revenue. The second piece is that because we are a not-for-profit and Honestly, because of the nature of the work that we do with the community that we work with, there is a stipulation, a policy that says you can apply to be excused from property tax, which is about 100,000, just under 100,000 a year for sketch. We were approved and we no longer pay that tax because we were able to purchase the space. That's pretty significant. So that money alone opens up a gap for us, like that we're used to having to raise that we can now put towards either program or right now to be able to make sure we can meet the, meet the, the, uh, the bonds um, and repayments. Next slide. All right, so here are some of the bonds that we have available. All right, so there are four. Um, for all together that we have had, a couple of them are not available anymore, but I'll explain. Uh, so <laughs> first is Sketches Giving Bond or Bond A. So the minimum investment is $5,000. The term for the investment is five years. Uh, it will yield an interest of 4% uh, per year uh, paid annually with the option to donate interest back to Sketch. Uh, principal is repaid at maturity. So at the end of the term, five years, okay? Uh, Sketches Community Bond D is the other option. Uh, minimum investment is $500. The term is three years uh, and it yields an interest of 3%. That interest is also paid annually and it's repaid at maturity. So for Bond A, we have 21 bonds left. Uh, and that one is called Canada's First Giving Bond, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, it has, it's actually a first in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Sketches doing the, doing the thing. Okay. All right. And the community bond D, there is 20, there are 27 bonds left. All right. So we're trying to get all of those sold. Right. Yeah. And can I tell you a secret here is that, well, not a secret because I'm going to out her, but Dynasty is a holder of one of these bonds herself. So um, we have participants and leaders who are, who are also jumping in, investing in this organization, who've come up through the organization. So that also speaks to the um, kind of commitment that we have. And the D-Bond really enabled our community of supporters who may not have a lot of capital um, sitting aside somewhere or couldn't necessarily donate it to us, but they could buy a bond. And, and we wanted to make it accessible to everyone we could. Um, and the A-Bond, as Dynasty said, is really exciting. It's the bond that keeps on giving. So you give us $5,000. We, we use that to purchase the space. Um, we give you... 4% interest, you'd say, no, no, we want you to 
uh, donate that back. So the donations from that uh, bond, we will also hold towards making sure we put that in the pocket of money that will pay back um, our loans at the end. So it's, and then you get a charitable uh, receipt for that, for that interest. So it's a way of keep on giving and you can opt into that option with the A bond. So it's pretty exciting. It's never been done in Canada, been done in other places, but never been done in Canada. And you can see we have 21 bonds left because it actually exceeded our expectations. People are really um, jumping on that bond. Okay, go ahead. Next slide, yeah. All right. So I remember I said there were four altogether. Well, there was a bond series B, the minimum investment was $25,000. Years to maturity was seven, so seven years till it matured, and the interest rate was 4.5%. Um, also paid annually, and you would get your money back upon maturity. But that one is now unavailable. Bond C as well, there was a minimum, oh. minimum investment of 10,000. Five years to maturity, interest rate was 4%. That one is also now not available. Okay, why? Because we have been funded by the City of Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, now we just need to sell out of bond A and bond D and we will be in that space permanently. Hello. Mm -hmm. Next slide. All right. Hey. So, uh, there are a few steps into uh, for purchasing a bond with Sketch. I just went through the process as Rudy mentioned. Uh, so it's actually very easy. It's very easy. Um, you just go to this website and you click invest in bond, right? Um, and you signed up to download the investor package, right? I think the link will be in the chat if people want to access the, um, Emma will post that into the, into the chat. The link, yes. Mm -hmm. So you'll receive an email uh, with your investment package. It, there will be an offering statement, a trust agreement, um, a five-year business plan, and all you have to do is click click the button and you will receive all of that, okay? Um, in order for you to start the process, you'll just need a few things. You'll need uh, your bank branch, you'll need your transit and account numbers, so all the stuff that you find on your void check or direct deposit form, uh, and your bond will be processed within five to ten business days. You'll just take the money direct out of your account, and interest will be paid yearly direct to your account, or you'll receive uh, an email asking if you want to take your interest or to reinvest it into Sketch and you just click a button, just press a button and choose what you would like to do with your money. So we are not going into the business of managing um, uh, community bonds. We are working with Tapestry Community Capital who have um, expertise and do this, that is what they do. They supported um, organizations like the Center for Social Innovation. They run their, their bond campaigns. Solar Share through TREC is another organization they work with. They've worked with other um, initiatives uh, who have done renovations on an organization. So they have all put, up, put the investment in all the back end to manage all the legal side um, and to make sure that you have someone who is, who is your, uh, as a bond holder, has a legal representative, um, making sure they take care of your, your bond uh, interest, um, the interest in your bond, not the paid interest, but the, the care of your bond. Um, so that's all taken care of so that people know that they, um, that they have that um, expertise and that's Tapestry Community Capital. Uh, you can look them up, they're, they're incredible to work with. So we don't have to be concerned about that. We simply get a request to pull the interest every year. We um, that's in our account. We pay it. We pay it out, and it gets sent out um, through their systems to everyone who has a bond. At the end of your term, about um, about nine months before your term ends, we will revisit people and say, "Where are you? Where Where are you at? Do you want the full return of your bond? Do you want to reinvest it?" Do you, um, and so that we can um, identify those who might want to keep investing with us if it's going good and you want to keep reinvesting, there's an opportunity to do that. At some point, we will close the bonds as we pay off. But if there's an opportunity for us to keep building that capacity to pay down the mortgage, you know, um, um, per se, then we may do that. But you'll have an opportunity to choose to do that. But you are, you, uh, we sign an agreement that says um, at the end of your term, you will receive your full capital 
uh, return. So um, that is um, also, yeah, so we have um, a lot of um, media that has also been supporting us lately. You can see what talked about um, Center for Social Innovation. They just did a big piece on us um, uh, and the bonds that we're selling, interview about the work that we're doing. That was really exciting. Um, people might know Tim Nash um, and the Sustainable Economist. She does the City, Good Investing, Corporate Nights, Mo Money Poke podcast, where Tim also talks about uh, sketch bonds. He's a big, he actually is, he holds a sketch bond. So he's invested in us, um, which has been amazing. So lots of people um, who've been talking about us, you can get a sense of what the, um, what the chatter is about. And uh, Emma has put the links to those into the chat if you want to review those documents. Next slide. Dynasty, do you want to share this? All right, so this person was just very happy to have invested in uh, a D bond, right? So we actually encourage everybody to tell all of your friends about your investment, please post it on social media. We will, uh, as long as you tag sketch, we will repost and all of that, right? But they said, very happy to say that I've invested in the awesome charity Sketch Toronto by buying two community bonds. Sketch Toronto provides art and leadership experiences to homeless and marginalized youth in Toronto. So yes, brag, 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 please. All right, question and answer period. Where are your questions? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, it was Dynasty's first time doing it with us. Awesome, awesome. It's a lot to manage, a lot of information to share with you. We wanna make sure that you get your answers um, covered though. So we just invite people to come on um, post any questions or raise your hand and we'll be happy to have a conversation. We want you to know that our bond um, series does end on uh, legally we can all we can we can sell them until March 15th. So we are coming towards the end and as you see, they're running out. So if you want to get in, get in now. Um, it's pretty exciting. Help us bring it home, literally, <laughs> um, yeah. to the end of the campaign, um, and um, and become part of that sketch community and and um, and uh, so we invite you to connect. If you sign up, then um, uh, Dale will follow up with you. He can he'll phone you, make a phone call. Dale Roy, as you see here on the screen, um, he's wonderful. He can take you through all the steps again. Um, and um, help you process a purchase of a bond and also answer any questions that you have. But you, you also just, once you sign up, you're not committed, you'll just get all the information, the business plan and so on. So you'll be able to kind of, um, you know, review those documents, but it is March 15th. Um, we will probably, we are looking to close the whole campaign in early spring. Um, so the other thing is if you just choose to make a donation, that's also fantastic. You will definitely still be a part of our community. Um, but we do believe in sort of that impact of being engaged and really invested, um, co-investing in each other. So, so any questions? I see Chris. Oh, Christine, you do fundraising with, with Michael Fraser. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Does anybody have any questions about, uh, the information, um, that we've given? I'll uh, just jump in. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. Um, wondered, uh, you're, you're going to draw the income to pay the bonds or the revenue from your rental programs. Uh, how challenging do you think that will be? What's, what's been your track record in terms of uh, income generated over the last little while? Yeah, good question. I mean, certainly over the last year is probably not a good example of that. Um, but over <laughs> the previous years, we've been running something called Space Share. And um, Space Share has been extremely successful in building over some between 100 and 150,000 a year um, and, and growing. That's one area. Then we also have revenue generation through workshops and training. And one of the focuses that we have, um, we're actually launching this year is a program called Next Up. And that will become a training program that we will, we will also be then um, working to generate funds through hire, people hiring uh, the team to do training for, and that could be corporate relationships. We've done it in those, those different spaces. Um, so there's many different um, ways that we will, will build on that capacity um, to, to um, raise revenue. We also 
we also secured, uh, just so you know, secured a mortgage for $1.1 million. Um, but we actually took, we actually have available to us 1.5. Um, so we have 400,000 um, that we retain in order to secure you know, payments, especially interest payments as we go. Um, and then at the end of five years, our mortgage will be up. At that point, we'll be you know, securing and paying down as much as we can. It, it may be that we need to work, you know, if worst case, one of the scenarios is that you have to increase your, your line of credit or increase, negotiate with the bank to be able to pay some of the, the loans back. What we understand though, is what the experts tell us at Tapestry is that it's a minimum of 77%. As long as you are managing everything well, and we will, um, what, what they expect is that 77% of the people who um, purchase bonds tend to, there's, there's a turnover. So um, we, we hope and expect that we'll have some, some turnover, at least 50% of that turnover in the first five years. Um, and then, or, or you can take the bonds and resell them. You can do another campaign and say, somebody wants to cash in theirs, we can resell those and do another five years with someone new. So there's many different strategies um, in being able to recover that. Yeah. And foundations are getting more, they're not quite there yet, but they're getting more and more uh, involved in impact investments. So places like Toronto Foundation, um, In Spirit Foundation, was one of our first out of the gate. They gave us a significant um, contribution to our, our, um, our bonds. Um, and so those, the foundations are taking part of their portfolios and doing impact investment with them. They're still doing their regular investments and, 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 and raising um, the capital for that, but they are taking a portion and, and actually making policy around doing impact investments. So we've built relationships with several of those as well. Um, uh, Hamilton Community Foundation, Ottawa Foundation, Toronto Foundation, and um, and so that also is a source that can be that can be approached again in a number of years. Yeah. Um, oh, great, Ron. Thank you. Um, people need to run. That's that's fine. Um, am I right to assume that individuals and organizations can buy? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It could be an organization or an individual. We've had companies that purchase. Um, we have um, people who have bought bonds together. Um, so uh, any, any sort of um, structure that way, we can, we can walk you through it. Dale can take you through the steps of how to do that. You can also buy a bond for someone else in somebody else's name. That's another option. We have a gift bond. So if you wanted to buy a D bond for $500 and give it as a gift, um, to somebody graduating university and say, here, <laughs> um, it's kind of a nice idea. Um, and that's also an option. So you can buy in somebody else's name, you can buy uh, collaboratively, you could buy as a company uh, or as another organization foundations. Great questions. Any other questions? Is this the first time folks have um, looked at bonds or community bonds? Yeah, it's new. It's fairly new in Canada. And, um, and even though we talk about bonds and in Canada, they talk about uh, looking at like it is shifting policy on a very big scale, because the, when you're looking at sustainability, you're looking at sustainability, not only from environmental. So you can hear things where there's certain levels of, of measurements about environmental responsibility. So they're creating bonds where people will invest in bonds when you're in companies that aren't using fossil fuel. So therefore we're, we're, we're looking at environmental issues. So you can invest in those bonds. Those are government bonds. So there's some really great bonds out there that are secured that way. Um, there's solar share, which I would pump as well, but they um, that, that do that, that um, they buy, um, uh, make buildings green with uh, solar panels and put them on and then, and then use that as a reusable energy. So there's those kinds of bonds, but the impact bonds are the ones that I think are um, going to really make the biggest change because then you're working directly with our community. You can see here today, I mean, collaborating with, with Dynasty is, uh, yeah, is that's the impact. That's the, both of us, you know, like that is what's going to change. And we're going to bring this message beyond and say, organizations like Sketch, we, we want to keep going and doing the work on the ground. In order to do that, 
we need to be able to stay where we are and build and secure that and, and grow from there. And this is an opportunity for organizations like us to do that. So you really are making a massive impact um, on, on, a, on a whole community and on a, um, and, and providing opportunity. So we can say this space can be stewarded for the next 20 years um, for this community. So really appreciate um, um, people's, uh, people's time and questions. Um, we have one that says, I'm not familiar with community bonds. Um, uh, so my apologies if this is obvious, there's no, uh, it's always good questions. Um, but is it a type, is this type of bond that is considered tax-free? It's no, you do pay tax on your interest. Yeah, you have to, you have to, um, you do have to factor that in. Um, part of the A bond gives you the benefit of then getting a tax uh, receipt if you donate it. And if that's helpful, um, on, everybody has to make that decision individually, but that is one way to, um, to utilize the, the charitable side of it, um, which is a unique thing that we can offer. Um, but you do pay taxes on the interest. Um, I, Liz, I love this. It's been so informative and I hope to support through a bond once, once I plan with my partner. Oh, awesome. Um, Liz, that's great. I know Liz, she's been part of a collaborative group that we, that we uh, have worked with and collaborated before. So that's really great, again, to see people in our own community jumping in and investing um, in, in the work that we're doing. Um, so I think that um, just to kind of overall reiterate that we have until um, December 15th, um, you can, oh, sorry. Did I say December? Goodness gracious. Yeah. Where is my head? March 15th. Thank you. I saw that head shaking, Joel. That was great. Um, March 15th <laughs> um, to, to sell the bonds. And we only have a few left. So yeah, spread the word, let people know. Um, we do have a bit more um, fundraising to do. So there is that option. Um, and, you know, again, we'll be doing um, anybody who is part of this campaign will receive a quarterly report on the upkeep and the and the financials, um, so that you can you will know where your investment is going um, and um, be informed. But we'll also hopefully sometime soon have a celebration in person. Maybe we'll even convince uh, um, oh Dynasty froze uh, Dynasty to perform <laughs> for everyone. Um, but we'll have a live, a, yes, a live presentation um, a celebration to celebrate the ownership. Um, of this space. So um, I, we welcome any questions. I think on the last slide you had um, contact for us, but if you go to info uh, or yeah, sorry, sketch.ca slash project home, um, or you can contact Dale, uh, it's just D-A-L-E at sketch.ca or myself, Rudy, R-U-D-Y at sketch.ca. And we'll be happy to um, walk you through the process. So there we go. Yeah, Emma's put it in there. So thank you so much. Um, and um, hopefully we'll see you on our list and be able to um, make you part of the project. Thanks so much. Yeah, well done, guys. Thank bye you. Bye thank you. Now. Okay, all right. Call anytime. <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. There we go. Yes.